Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the IoT for All podcast. I'm Ryan Chacon, and on today's episode, we're going to talk about what InsureTech IoT is and how IoT is playing a role in the insurance industry. With me today is Scott Ford, the CEO of Pepper. They are a US-based consumer IoT platform. So a lot of exciting stuff in this conversation, kind of a new conversation, something we haven't talked a lot about on the show. Before we get into the episode, please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. Give this video a thumbs up and hit that bell icon so you get the latest episodes as soon as they are out. Other than that, let's get on to the episode. Welcome, Scott, to the IoT for All podcast. Thanks for being here this week. Thanks for having me. Yeah, let's kick this off by having you give a quick introduction about yourself and the company to our audience. Sure. My name is Scott Ford. I'm the CEO of a company called Pepper. Pepper is a venture capital backed um, platform as a service uh, for uh, allowing big enterprises to access the benefits of consumer IoT. So we build out the uh, the solutions on behalf of big enterprises that align with their strategic imperatives as well as their you know own branding and and that type of thing so we're not we're not a pepper's not a consumer facing brand at this point gotcha okay fantastic um i know we had a bunch of interesting things we wanted to cover in our conversation today the first one kind of focused on kind of the insurance technology side of things um for those of our audience who may be unfamiliar with with that world, can you kind of just set the stage for us and talk about kind of what that is, what that means, and then we'll kind of dive in further from there? Yeah, um, sure. I, I've always believed that the uh, biggest sort of industry benefactor of, of IoT data was the insurance industry. Um, and the notion there is that you have access to all kinds of data that can be used for, um, you know, uh, more precise underwriting of homeowners, auto policies, uh, but also serves as an early warning system to alert homeowners to, you know, some sort of peril that may occur. So that at a high level is is sort of the thesis inside of the insurance marketplace. Um, what, uh, what What's happening today is that um, insurance carriers are essentially dabbling in uh, insure tech IoT. So there are a handful of companies out there that um, have created devices that serve to, um, you know, deliver some of the benefits to insurance carriers around uh, claims reduction and early warning. So th- those include water shutoff valves. Water is the number one uh, sort of claim in homeowners insurance. There are, um, you know, leak detectors, you know, smoke and fire detectors, um, you know, a variety of things like that. So there's probably five different companies that uh, are sitting there serving insurance carriers today. Um, the problem is those are all point solutions. So meaning single device, single app under the brand of the device. And so it's not very strategic to the insurance carrier, which is why I believe they've been only dabbling at this point. I think there is a, a realization though that the data that's being provided as uh, part of these um, you know, sort of trials is very much relevant to the insurance business model. And one big indicator of that is the $1.2 billion investment that State Farm Insurance made in ADT with the presumption that they're going to access uh, all of the data there for for the purposes of, um, you know, uh, benefiting the uh, insurance carrier business model. Gotcha. Okay, fantastic. And, and I know you obviously mentioned from your perspective, the insurance industry is one of, if not the biggest area uh, that will benefit from IoT data that is now being pulled. But talk to us about how IoT is actually playing a role in, in the insurance space, what benefits it's bringing to individuals and insurance companies, uh, and then we'll kind of expand from there. Sure. Um, so again, it's, it's, it's really kind of low scale today. Um, you know, Maybe there's a couple million devices in the market, which in, in insurance carrier terms would be very, very low scale across the industry. Um, and, you know, the consumer proposition is generally uh, something to uh, alert the consumer, you know, before um, some sort of damage occurs, uh, which is, you know, the number one, you know, claim is water, as I mentioned. So if you can detect the water leak before it becomes a problem, um, that's, you know, going to save the consumer and the insurance carrier a lot of money and time. Um, so that's, that's the, the, the typical consumer use case. When you start to layer in, 
other home automation solutions like uh, video surveillance and you know smart home security and things like that that really broadens the um, the ability for the insurance carrier to collect really relevant data that they then can use to better underwrite their uh, their, their customers. So um, the the market is is really new and and nascent and and I'm talking specifically about consumer lines of insurance, not, you know, business lines of insurance. We're focused on the consumer as the end user. And who's paying for the devices? Is that something that the insurance company is bringing in and selling to the, um, to the customer? Or is it something that insurance companies are giving to the customer because if this helps prevents claims and it saves the insurance company likely money down the line? Yeah, it's all of the above. Um, so, you know, in some cases, the, the insurance carrier you know, completely subsidizes the device and the service. Other cases, it's um, it's it's discounted to the uh, to the end user, and and you know, often, you know, the insurance carriers will make it available for purchase from uh, the end user. So it's all all the above. Or they, get, I've I've seen situations um, in with auto insurance where if you put a tracker in your car, they'll discount your auto insurance. Is that kind of in the same realm as we're talking about here? Yeah, and you can extend that to home insurance as well. So you get an auto insurance discount if you have it. If you have um, certain devices in your home, um, you can get a, a home discount up to twenty percent, which is which is real money. I mean, it's um, you know, the typical if the typical uh, homeowner's policy is you know a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars, twenty five you know percent of that is uh, is a big savings. And ha- what is the feedback like from? consumers and what i'm i guess what i'm trying to ask is are there certain situations where devices are being well received as far as like i think everyone can say wanting to understand and and um be preventative when it comes to a leak in my house is something that both sides can agree on but like for the auto side i'm not sure if that's the case like i understand i mean at least personally from my end my insurance company keeps telling me hey if you install this you're going to save money but for me, it's like I don't want them monitoring my driving habits, and so how how has that reception been across different areas that you all have kind of played in? It's it's a bit of a mixed bag. Um, the the and and it's one of the problems that that we Pepper are are solving. Um, the 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 first issue is um, sort of what we call install rate. So an insurance carrier uh, mails you know devices to um, a hundred people, you know, the market install rate is maybe 60%, 65%. Um, and that's a big delta, uh, that, that, you know, they've got to close cause it's very expensive, um, equipment that they're subsidizing. But to your point, if it's not, if it's not a utility to me as a consumer, um, why would I plug it in? So, uh, I think people have to do a better job of bringing out the, um, the, the benefits to the consumer to get that conversion rate up. In the, in the car, I think it's the same thing. I've heard, um, you know, it a lot. Why, why would I let the, my insurance carrier, um, you know, make judgment on my driving behavior? Right. Um, and, um, and that's, that, that's friction, particularly if there's no, um, consumer utility to it. Meaning, is there an app that allows, you know, so for a, um, you know, family tracker type of, um, thing um or is there you know is is there a device that can go in the car that um that creates a, a wi-fi hotspot in the car so there there are a lot of things that you can do to appeal to the to the consumer by putting these types of features in um, in the devices and and the services that you're providing absolutely yeah the, the auto thing is interesting because uh at least my insurance company directly is saying you know this will if by doing this no matter what we're not going to increase your rates and to me it's like I understand that, but I'm also not confident that you'll ever bring down my rates if you see the way I drive. <laughs> so you know, um, but it's an interesting thing. Thing that's like where I first started to see how smart devices on a consumer level were being paired with the insurance company to help you know save money and things. So what you're talking about is is across other areas, like in the home, is is um, absolutely fascinating to kind of learn about. Um, how about in situations where? And the reason I ask is my sister actually is used to live in Florida down in Key West and getting insurance down in those areas of the country are not always easy 
for certain kinds of insurance because of weather, natural disasters, things like that. How are these, or how is the implementation of these types of devices potentially helping fix that um, and helping kind of allow insurance that maybe wasn't achievable to be more achievable because of the data that's collected? I'm just curious how that's kind of, you know, thought about. Yeah, I, I think if there's, you know, a hurricane, it's very difficult to, um, to, to kind of mitigate the impact there. Um, you could put a water sensor in your home, but it's going to alert you to what ought to be obvious to you already that get out of town kind of thing. Um, so, um, but in, in, you know, normal household activities um, where, you know, uh, severe weather is not a factor uh, or severe meaning a hurricane is not a factor, but you might have, um, you know, uh, severe thunderstorms that end up creating a leak in your home. These, these solutions are very good for that. They give you um, early warning, um, allow you to kind of connect with uh, professional services to come help you and mitigate things. Insurance carriers love it because it reduces claims, um, which is a, a big part of their model. Yeah, I, I was, I was kind of leaning that that's where my initial thinking was going, that it's, it's probably a good thing for everybody. Um, but I know it's, it's tough kind of in those kinds of areas uh, of the country, like hurricane, for instance, um, insurance, and things like that. Um, how does this, so you kind of touched on it earlier and you kind of said like all of the above as far as, you know, who's paying for it, who's buying it. But what have you seen as uh, when it comes to the install rate, the reception, when it is more of an upsell, when it's something like, like how is that really playing into the adoption? Um, and, or, or maybe are there other kinds of business models that are, that are now being enabled because of access to this data and these different devices that, that customers are now using? Yeah, sure. And and if we're talking insurance, it's still the early days. So there's not a lot of um, kind of baseline data out there. Talk about the increase in, in conversion when you add devices that provide uh, desired utility to, to, the, uh, to the end user. But the logic is there that says, hey, if you send me a, um, you know, a leak detector um, and you send me a, you know, video camera and maybe a thermostat, uh, yeah, I'm more likely to install those and control those inside of my insurance carrier's um, app, branded app. And so that's that, that's how we're approaching the market is encouraging insurance carriers to, um, to to embrace being at the center of the user's connected life, right? And so for very little investment, they they can do that and get all of the data that they um, that they ever desired from IoT and and even you know that the direct data from insurance related devices is um, is golden, but when you start talking about you know eight or nine or ten devices in the consumer's home and the data that's collected and then analyzed from uh, from an insurance perspective, there's you know the household behavior becomes a proxy for um, you know the the type of insured. Right. And this is information you're not going to get in a credit report. Um, so it's real time information about um, a lot of things and activities that are occurring in and how in a household and and can help insurance carriers understand, you know, what type of uh, underwriting risk a particular, you know, sort of household might represent. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And how are you seeing um, the when it comes to the actual adoption of the devices by consumers? What challenges are you, you seeing that have them come across when it comes to following the, the guidelines to use the devices properly, installing the devices, um, updating the devices, you know, things like that. Are, are you seeing kind of any challenges when it comes to, to that piece of the puzzle? Yeah, you got to be really explicit. Um, you know, we Pepper acquired a company called Notion um, last year, into last year. And so in the Notion case, um, there are tutorials that are built into the application that, you know, kind of guide the consumer of where they should place these uh, devices. Because if it's not placed in a, an appropriate place, you might have um, a huge issue and, and never know it. So, um, so that's that's an important piece of this is that the devices are placed in in the areas that represent the the, the greatest risk. Um, the, you know, when you get to the um, sort of shutoff valves, you know, these are devices that um, detect a leak and then shut off your water at the water main to prevent any further damage. Um, 
Typically, that requires a uh, installation by a, a, a plumber or some sort of professional. There's always friction when when you have to do that, but um, that's you know those are big benefits to the to the insurance carriers. So they're uh, they're willing to consider subsidizing that. Makes total sense. Yeah, I think um, obviously it's it's plugging something into uh, an OBD port in your car is very different than installing something into a system that you didn't even install yourself in your house, right? So that anything electrical or or or, or um, has to do with the sewage system or anything water system, I, I I imagine makes way more sense to make sure it's done properly. Because um, if the data is not accurate that they're getting, then it's useless for everybody. Um, but what what about? I guess the last question I have I wanted to kind of learn a little bit about is the interoperability of these devices when it comes to the home, right? The home. Tons of different devices, tons of different kinds of connectivity going on at times. They have Wi-Fi networks, Bluetooth. There's tons of things happening in a home. Different stuff going on. How? How? And or even like outside of the connect, the smart products that a, comp- a person has. There's just different systems in their home. They're all di- made by different brands, etc. How is that being handled when it comes to insurance companies being able to you know build it or sell or or pass on a device to their customers? All the homes are different. All the way they're built and everything's kind of unique that's that, that that's been the sort of principal issue in this market forever and it's the problem we solve so um in terms of the insurance related devices as i mentioned there's a handful five to six that are actively you know purchased by insurance carriers and deployed in into the market each one of those devices are a separate instance of um of a use case and an app and everything else. It's not branded to the insurance carrier. It's not, um, there's no interactivity between these devices. They're all, you know, just sort of doing their, their own thing. That makes it really difficult for an insurance carrier to, um, to embrace and, and push beyond kind of a trial phase. And so what we're doing is, is integrating all of these devices into a common platform, the Pepper platform. And then making those uh, functions and controls available all together in a common interface. And so further, we are going to add um, everyday home automation devices, um, you know, thermostats and cameras and other things so that this uh, insurance carrier customer who just, um, you know, sort of integrated three of these insurance devices into this app can now um, access a large catalog of common devices that will also work inside of this app. And so I think that's the future of things here is to, you know, kind of consolidate and, and make sure these things are interoperable. Yeah, that was actually my next question, like before we wrap up, it's just what does the future of this space look like? So outside of the interoperability element of it, what, what other things do you see kind of evolving from the early learnings of this space? Yeah, so, so I, I think we're past, you know, the, the first sort of milestone here, which is the, um, the convincing of the industry that IOT data is going to impact their business. So um, if nothing else, the State Farm investment in ADT is, um, is you know, kind of put the industry on notice, right? Um, so we're past that. So everybody uh, in the industry understands that it's valuable and the question is how, right? And so that's what we bring is a turnkey solution to be able to allow these uh, insurance carriers to, to go as light or as heavy as they want into the connected device space. Certainly the insurance related devices have to be in the mix. So if you're uh, if you're an insurance carrier and just want to provide that those to your end users, that that's fine. You run into the issue of end user um, utility um, and usefulness, but um, but that's possible. All the way to, you know, we can enable an insurance carrier to become a home security company, right? With central station monitored security, all the devices that, um, that, that are necessary to enable that at um, re- really, really good uh, pricing to the, the end user or if the insurer wants to uh, subsidize it. So that's kind of where I see going. And I think you'll have some earlier adopters and more aggressive players than others, but market is definitely moving that direction. Fantastic. Um, really appreciate you coming on today to talk about this. This is something we've very lightly dabbled in in the past, but I haven't really had an expert come on and really dive into it deeply. So I appreciate your time. Um, for our audience who wants to learn more about this topic, learn more about what you all are doing, follow up with potentially any questions, what's the best way they can do that? Yeah, they can hit our website at um, 
pepper.me, M-E, or our um, company that we acquired, which is Notion. That website is getnotion.com. Um, and if, if you have a specific question, there's, there's a way to contact us and, and, uh, we're, we're pretty good at getting back to people, uh, pretty quickly. So, um, yeah, there are a variety of ways to get a hold of us. Perfect. Well, Scott, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you.